Okay, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to turn our project into something that works in both production and development using environment variables with Webpack. We'll also discuss how libraries like React use these variables to make smaller bundles in production. We're going to start where we left off in the last episode, but if you need to catch up, git check out prod-js. All right, so first things first, in our main JS, we have some stuff that's commented out. Now let's fix this. Now Webpack is a lot simpler than it seems. In our webpack.dev, you can see that the entry takes an object, and that object can take an array. So in this case, main is pulling in main.js. So if we take these out and place them right before, We can take them out of main.js, and they'll still be loaded right before. So let's run that server and make sure it works. So now you can see that the main.js is the same for both webpack prod and webpack dev. And the difference is we load the dev specific code inside the config file. Now for the rest of the course, we'll be working with both of these config files separately. So make sure you're on the right one. I'll say webpack dev and webpack prod. All right, moving on. Now our project doesn't have a lot of JavaScript in it yet, so any optimizations we do will feel a little underwhelming. But as we add to it, these optimizations will get more important, and we'll continue to optimize for production throughout the course. If you recall, we're calling webpack with node env equals production. But one of the gotchas of webpack is that that doesn't really work within the webpack compile process. It doesn't work, that is, unless you explicitly define that variable. So let's explicitly define the variable now. Within Webpack Prod, down in the plugins, this one's going to come directly from Webpack. Webpack define plugin. This plugin takes an object of options that will allow you to define variables as though they're on the process object. So anywhere we would use process env, let's define node env. And then we're going to do a JSON stringify production. This will add a variable to all of our code during the Webpack compilation. Let's see how that works. In main.js, let's add a console log. And that console log will say what our environment is. So let's npm run build, and then npm run prod to run the production version of the site. Now in our console, we can see that it prints out environment is production. If we comment this out and save and, re and rerun both of these, on reload, the console is going to say environment is undefined. Even though we're running node with the, the production variable and webpack with the production variable, webpack doesn't allow environment variables to sneak into the compilation unless they're explicitly defined. All right, let's put that back. Now, just to show how much of a difference it makes, when you include the production variable inside the Webpack compilation, let's add a large library. So we're going to npm install React. And inside of our main.js, let's require React. So npm run build. We can see that our main bundle is quite a bit bigger now. If we go to our Webpack prod and make this development, It goes from 12K to 59. When compiling using Webpack, React doesn't know it's in production mode unless you tell it using this define plugin. Using the define plugin is going to give you, in this case, 37 more kilobytes, which is a considerable difference. The more libraries you add to your project, the more of them will use this process env node env variable. And if it's set to production, they'll automatically strip out a lot of the things that the library includes for the development process. In React, that includes such things as helpful errors and other developer niceties. Now there's another pretty cool feature of Webpack that not a lot of folks use. When defining a config like Webpack prod, 
Instead of exporting an object, we can export a function that returns an object. And in so doing, give that object whatever variables we pass in. So that looks like this. We're going to use the hash rocket form of the function. And then inside the function, we're going to return an object. And we're going to put all of the webpack config inside of that return. So now inside the define plugin, we no longer have to use a string. We can now use inv node inv. The last step is inside of our package JSON. When we run build, we can run it as webpack and then give it an environment flag, which will have node inv production. So this is a different way of adding environment variables to your webpack build. It doesn't have to be for the node environment. You can literally pass anything and give it a value. So that's another way to customize the build. Now this pattern of assembling configs is common in Webpack boilerplates out there. We'll get into combining config files in a later episode. For right now, I'm going to keep the config files separate so that they're easier to work with for people who haven't seen these before. Honestly, this is one of the most difficult parts of learning Webpack, is how, how modular the configs can be and how people making boilerplates tend to make it more complicated than it needs to be. We do repeat ourselves within the module rules, but there's enough variation that I would keep them separate for now. These configs, prod and dev, are going to vary as our course goes on. And anything we do now to not repeat ourselves will probably just make it more confusing. Now, I'm not really sure why Webpack doesn't use the usual node environment production or why it is undefined. If you know, please let me know. We can see how, using just environment variables, we're able to optimize the JavaScript in our production build. The finished code can be found at git checkout prod-js-final. In the next episode, we'll finish optimizing our JavaScript with a look at how Uglify and other forms of compression work to make our JavaScript bundles truly tiny. See you there.